This is a quick guide on how to submit your EIC Accelerator Step 2 application. I'm going to show it very quickly. So number one is the links for the EIC Accelerator Step 2 submission, they are not public. This is invite only. You only obtain the links on where exactly to submit if you pass step one. So this is guarded. Only if you pass step one, you're going to get the submission links. I do have the submission links. So you can see that I have different links for all of these different challenges because you have the open call and all the challenge calls. And they're obviously going to be renewed every year. So let's just say I'm going to pick the EIC Accelerator open. I'm going to click the link. I'm already logged in. So you can see it's my name at the top. I'm not going to show all of the login. You can see this in the step one submission guide, but it's basically the same process. In this case, you can see the next deadline is October 3rd, and this is going to be in eight days from now. And then you can see, okay, this is EIC Accelerator step two. And you can see that the challenge is EIC Accelerator open. So this is the challenge we have chosen. It's the open call. And then very important, Again, you have the official templates. Always click the download button just to get the templates and check if there have been any changes. This is where you download the official proposal templates. And then the same process as for step one, you have your PIC, your participant identification code. Your company already needs to be registered within PIC. If you don't have one, you can just Google it and you can register it. It's pretty quick. But in this case, it's already registered. This is my company. So I'm going to just click it. And then again, the acronym, I'm simply going to add a place holder and the same for the short summary. And then I'm going to click save and go to next step. Again, I'm not going to tell you how to write the proposal. Get the ESC Accelerator Startup Pack if you need advice. You can find the link in the description. Of course, you have to add a real acronym and a real short summary. Short summary means the abstract. It's going to ask you if you're sure. You're going to say yes. You have to give consent. And then you're going to move on to the next step. Same process as for step one. And again, continue with this proposal. And this all looks good. I am the main contact person, so this is all fine click on save and go to the next step. And this is already it. This is the submission window. So this is where you have to add anything. Again, as for step one, there are two parts, part A and part B. Part A is an online form, which I'm going to show. You have to add some details and you have to click a few buttons. Part B, this is the proposal you should have already written on the side. If you haven't done so, you need help. Check the link in the description. EIC Accelerator Startup Pack is going to tell you everything you need to know and give you all the templates and so on. But it's basically the online form part A and then part B is just upload upload all the documents you should have already prepared. So let's start with the part A. We click on edit forms. So now we can see all of the data we have already added and then general information, we click on show. And now we have to add some general information about the company. Again, same thing, we can add the data, of course, the title and the duration. I'm going to just add placeholders here. The free keywords are again optional. And then the descriptors, they are selected to select your evaluator. So you have to consider that if you send in this proposal, it's going to be reviewed by evaluator. So what you wanna do is you wanna pick the right keywords that describe your project. You can see there's a few lists where you can choose and then you always click on add. You have to add three in total. So for example, I'm going to pick different versions here and then you can see it's going to add all of the ones that I'm adding and then you can see obviously what makes the most sense and I always recommend to consider which type of evaluator do you want to have, which background for an evaluator is going to be the most impressed by your technology. So you have to think these keywords are going to be used for the evaluator selection. Who do you want to have? And then of course you have to add a meaningful abstract and we're just going to add placeholders and then the same as for step one if this is a resubmission or you have already submitted a similar proposal just add the proposal number here this is my first submission so i'm going to click no and then there's a bunch of consent you have to give in order to be allowed to submit this application i'm just going to for the purpose of this video just check the box for everything and always click on save form afterwards it's going to save pretty slowly but you don't want to lose data so don't just jump to the next part just always click save form and then you wait and once this is done on the top right corner, you click on participants and contacts and jump to the next part. You want to stay in this form until everything is filled. And then here, now this should show your company. So you say show participants details. And now this is opening up. And then you can say department name. Again, management is always a good placeholder. And then you just give the same address as your organization. If you have an actual department, then of course you can pick that, but most startups don't. So just write management. Title, I'm going to add doctor in this case, and I'm going to say I'm a man. And then of course the position can be the CEO, department can be management, and the address is always going to be the same here. And then there are a few options. So for example, researchers involved in the proposal, but there are a few other things. They're not very consequential, but for example, what role is the organization going to do in the project? I'm going to click everything that makes sense. Project management, yes. Communication, yes. Provision of research and tech infrastructure, yes. 
enterprise, obviously market needs, research performer, technology developer, and everything that makes sense for the project. And then the other things like list up to five publications. A lot of these things are actually more research heavy. So the ESC accelerator doesn't fit perfectly. Some of these things you can leave empty. For example, a gender equality plan. Most companies don't have one. This is all fine. You can just click save form. You don't have to fill all of these things. Once this is done, you click on budget in the top right. And now you can see it's asking you for the grant again. So this is the grant budget. I'm going to go with two and a half million. Most companies go for the maximum amount. And then I click on the save button again. And now I click on ethics and security. So now this is very particular to a project. So are there going to be human embryonic research and obviously clinical trials involving human participants, personal data, animals. There's also stuff on AI and other things. So you have to consider, okay, what is actually relevant for your project? If you are doing clinical trials, of course, they're going to be human participants. And then you click yes. Are they volunteers? There are a bunch of questions. And then for the description, you can just add the page number in the proposal. If on page, let's say 45, you're going to detail some clinical trials in a work package, then you just add the page number. But if you don't have a particular page, for example, this is kind of relevant for the entire proposal, you can just write one to 50 or something. I'm going to click no everywhere, but there are also specific parts. So here you just add the page number. AI is very common. So of course, AI, you're going to add a page number where it is described. Then very important, you have to give consent here that you have considered all of these ethics issues. This one is actually very easy to forget. It's going to warn you if you don't click this one, but you have to add a checkbox here. And then for all of the ethics issues, if you have clicked yes anywhere in this ethic table, then you have to explain here two things. And this is the ethical dimension of the objectives and so on. And then you have to describe, okay, explain the issues in detail and also your compliance. This doesn't have to be long. It says 5,000 characters, but you can just literally add a paragraph for each. So this doesn't have to be long. You just have to explain how exactly you're going to handle these issues. I'm going to leave it empty because I clicked no everywhere, but of course you can fill it if you click yes. And then you have a few other questions about misuse and EU classified information and so on. And again, you can justify it. It's optional. I'm going to leave it empty because I have not declared any issues and I'm going to click on save form again. And now I click on other questions and now we have the funding type. I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be blended finance. How much investment do we want to have? Let's just pick a number. Actually, let's go with the average. So we're going to have, for example, 6 million. This is actually a good number. That's pretty much reflecting the average of what company are actually asking for actually when they are approved. So the average funding they're going to get. So gender of the CEO, let's just pick whatever woman, man, man, it doesn't really matter. If you don't have a position, of course, you say we do not have that position. And then there's two types of consent. So this is if it is selected and then information can be shared and so on. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to click yes and yes. And then I'm going to save the form. And then we can see, have we actually managed to fill everything in? If not, it's going to warn us there's going to be an error. Okay, let's check the validation result. Perfect, no issues at all. I'm going to click save and exit form. And this was part A. So part A is completely done. Now all we need to do is upload all the documents, submit, and that's it. So great, now we only have to take care of part B. So now, as you can see, we have a bunch of different documents that we have to upload. And now all we need to do is click on upload and upload all the documents. I have prepared a bunch of dummy materials. So you can see they're all called dummy. And again, all of these documents you should have prepared separately. This is just a submission guide. This is not going to tell you exactly how to write a proposal. Again, in the description, ESC Accelerator Startup Pack, it's going to tell you everything you need to know. Okay, a few important things. So you can see the video is obviously a little on the bottom. This is because they had to integrate that. It's a little separate because you have larger files when it comes to video. And a few other things you're going to notice that some are required and some are optional. So the ones that don't have a star, they're obviously optional. Additional docs optional. This is the 10 page document, the 10 page PDF file that's optional. Letters of intent is optional as well. Of course, you have to upload letters of intent, but they're optional here. And ownership control declaration is also optional. In 2024, this is related to companies that are doing semiconductors or doing AI research. So this is going to be specifically for these types of companies. But this is it. I have now finished part A and I've also finished part B. I've uploaded all my documents, all the ones that are mandatory. And now I click on submit and now it's submitted. Thank you.